Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Friday, TGIF. Yes, my last Friday at work. And uh, some news about that, yeah. Also, wow, it's National Dog Day. So you got pictures of the dog this morning, mainly because I don't know where the heck Stitch is. I let him out about an hour ago. Uh, yeah, I've been up for a while. I let him out about an hour ago and uh, He's not in his usual spot, so he must be, like, trolling the neighborhood. <laughs> anyway, I've got a good one for you today. Closing arguments in the stage suicide case. You don't want to miss this. They do. Morning, everybody. Crafting journey here. That journey chick over on Instagram and the leftovers on my second channel. Check that out. The link is down below. I'm trying to get that channel launched. The YouTube algorithm looks at likes. So if you could go over there, subscribe and like, that would really help me get that channel launched. I've been doing an a video <laughs> once a week when I do my yard sales. This is part of my new business. Today is my last Friday. Then Tuesday, I am officially retired and fun employed with my new job reselling used items for profit on eBay. So check out those, check out that leftover channel. So I'm getting out my watercolors. Yes. Well, I've, I had them out. I've been up since, I don't know, five o'clock this morning. I don't know why I've been waking up so early, but I have been. So I was doing a little painting. I did some last night and I did some this morning. So we're going to get everything nice and juicy here. Okay. So let me show you what I've, oh my goodness, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. So last night I did this little landscape here. <laughs> Just playing around. I've been watching some acrylic painters and getting some ideas from them. Wow, you can't you can't really see it. Okay. There, there it is. See the sun and the trees and you know the grass and stuff. So just kind of playing around there. Then last night I did this one. Yeah. I like how this turned out. I like the little buds, the rosebuds up here. I just kind of mix up the flowers. And then this morning, I did this little composition, just playing around. I was trying to mix some different colors. I did some Payne's gray and green here, um, some blues and purples here, and just different things, some buds, some vines, just playing around. So what I thought I would do this morning, while we are chit-chatting, I prepared another canvas and I put the, almost like the landscape background to it, but I'm going to do flowers on the landscape background. I thought that would be super cute. So it's sufficiently dry because, like I said, I've been up for a while. So it's pretty dry, but it's watercolor. So when you put more water to it, it's, you know, you never know what you're going to end up with. So we're going to play around here with some flowers. Yes, we are. All right. So it's National Dog Day. This is, this is the day, if you're considering adopting a dog, you know, don't buy them. Don't buy a dog. Go to the shelters and adopt the dogs. Now, I know when COVID was going on, the, the shelters were practically empty because people were adopting the dogs like crazy. Um, so I don't know what they're like now, but, you know, consider adopting a dog at a shelter. Now, I have plenty of dogs. I've got two dogs, two cats. That's enough. Yeah. But I can't say that if I didn't see a stray that I wouldn't pick it up. You know, I'm just, uh, that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're thinking about getting a dog? Today's the day. Let me know down in the comments if you're going to go adopt a dog. I bet you I get no comments <laughs> about adopting a dog, but that's okay. I understand. It's expensive. The amount of money I spend at Chewy.com for milk bones and 
dry food and wet food and then cat food and cat litter and shots. They all need rabies shots. I got to go get them to the vet. Yeah. Another part of being a responsible pet owner, right? Getting them to the vet. It's just the last time I took the cats to the vet, I got into a car accident. <laughs> but I ended up making money on that one, so yeah. A little rear ender. The woman was pulling out of Taco Bell and she I guess she was checking her order and she wasn't paying attention and she ran into the back of me. So let's do some flowers. This is going to end up either really bad or really good. We're going to, we're going to see how adding a background is going to affect the painting. So I placed an order yesterday for some India inks. They're for watercolor. Um, so I can play around with a little watercolor ink. I think that'll be fun. Now I want to add while this is still wet, I want to add a little dark blue, I think. Just, whoa, that's really dark. Wow. Really dark. Oh my God, the garbage man is already here. Wow, they're early. They are early. Wow, I think I'm just going to go ahead and blend this through the whole thing because, wow, that is dark. But that's okay. A little darker than I had anticipated. Let's get some water on the brush. But it's still really pretty. That's the thing about watercolor. It's so forgiving. It really is. Now, what color was that? I was forget what color I was using. That's terrible, isn't it? I really like this, the blue and the purple. I think I got a little too much going on there. A little too much. Let's see if we can take some of that out. I'm still working on how to get that water to paint ratio, but I'm learning. All right, so that's one flower. <laughs> Not done yet. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room, <laughs> Crafting and Crime Daily. <laughs> what you came here for. All right, so yesterday in the stage suicide case i brought you an update as i was driving to work the judge made his decision on the rule 29 motion for judgment of acquittal and he apologized to the defense for some remarks that he had made the day before making it seem like their motion was just administrative and would be just you know something she could put on the record and it would be dismissed but he said, no, you made a very compelling argument, and I, I've i really given this a lot of thought. And he thought about it overnight, and then when he comes back the next day, the prosecution, like obviously very nervous, the lead prosecutor, the elected official, is not in the courtroom. I don't, I don't know where she was. She had something else she had to do. And so the assistant prosecutor, he didn't want to go forward. He's like, we, this is a sham. We, you know, we got to, I'm not going to stay here. Oh, you know, and the judge is like, you will sit down. And he's like, no, I'm not going to stay here without the lead prosecutor. You were informed that she couldn't make it this morning and you told her it was okay. And now you're proceeding. Well, you're going to proceed without me. And he walks out of the courtroom. Now, by the time the judge renders his decision and they're ready to argue jury instructions, uh, the lead prosecutor was there and the other, the one that threw the tantrum, he's back. I don't know if, I hope he didn't lose his job because that's a bold move. That is a, that takes balls to tell a judge that he's running a sham courtroom and and then walk out. That is really ballsy. Seriously ballsy.
And I don't know if there were any sanctions off the record that we didn't hear about. Uh, that could very well be. I don't know. Sometimes judges don't want to deal with that during the trial. They'll deal with it afterwards. So that'll be interesting. So as you know, he denied the motion for judgment of acquittal, but said he would reconsider it at the close of the case. Now, here is where I made a mistake yesterday, and I do apologize. I did not realize that the prosecution had rested and the defense had started their case. They had put on a witness that I did not listen to, and I do apologize. This was a another forensic anthropologist, apparently with more experience than what the plaintiff's expert was. And she had looked through the photographs of the bones. She never did get the opportunity to actually see the bones and examine them in person. But she looked at all the microscopic photographs and she rendered the opinion that these could very well have occurred during the hanging. So conflicting experts, which I, I kind of suspected there would be conflicting experts. Then it was at the close of the afternoon that the, uh, because they went right into the defense case, she had not had her opportunity to make her motion for judgment of acquittal. So he allowed it at the end of the day. And then that's, everything else is correct about what I said. So closing arguments yesterday, and I got to tell you, <laughs> The, the man that the assistant prosecutor that threw the fit, he was the one doing closing arguments for the prosecution. And boy, you could tell that they are very angry with Diane Menashe. They really are. They, are, they do not like her tactics. Um, they wanted to put into the jury instructions that what the lawyer says is not evidence, which, you know, he says, I already say that. We don't need to put that in there again. Uh, <laughs> So, well, we wanted emphasized. Well, yeah, and good luck with that. So he basically made the argument that, you know, who else could it have been? There was no one else that would have had the motive. And the motive, they argued, was that, you know, he had sent a private email to some other friend saying that his marriage was over. And this was like a month or so before this uh, suicide. So he was just arguing the inferences. He says, you know, the bed was made. You know, he leads us into the garage. Everything he, we've already talked about, he goes over it again. Then Diane Menashe gets up. And man, you, I don't know <laughs> if you can tell how impressed I am with her. I just love this woman. If I ever get in trouble. God forbid. I am calling her. I'm going to say, hey, Diane, I know you're in Ohio. Could you pro hoc vice into Kansas and come help me? Because man, she's good. She's really good. I did not realize. And she says here, you know, one of the things that Emily Noble had said to her sister is that I would never, you know, she promised her sister she would never kill herself, that she wouldn't do that to her sister. Now, how many times do you have these conversations with anybody about, are you go would you ever kill yourself? Only if you think they're depressed. What other time would you ask them that? It doesn't just come up in conversation. I don't just randomly tell you, you know, I would never kill myself. So you don't have those kind of conversations unless you think the person is depressed. And Diane pointed out, that if we could predict when someone was going to commit suicide, if we're, if there were, you know, s notes left and, you know, signals ahead of time, w we probably wouldn't have suicide. We could, we could prevent it. He s she says, you know, suicides just happen out of nowhere and we never understand why or where. No, she didn't leave a note. She didn't leave any, any signals to any of her friends that she was, planning this or, you know, of course not. And I think I told you that when a person decides to commit suicide, usually that's the happiest they're going to be because they've already made the decision. Then she pointed out how she, she didn't walk away with that yellow cord that he pointed out in the garage because she would, 
you know, she wanted to just be seen walking normally towards the park. And so the USB, she, she, Diane demonstrated that it would fit right in your pocket and nobody would be the wiser. And this is something I did not know. I didn't realize this by the evidence that she had alcohol in her water bottle when she went for her walk. Diane also pointed out that it isn't till way after the searches commence that this man that says he saw her that morning going for a walk retracts his statement. All the searches, everything were based on his testimony that he saw her that morning going for a walk. And it makes total sense. Of course, she got up and made the bed. But, you know, the prosecution argues, who makes their bed if they're going to go commit suicide? I don't know. It, this was just her routine. And we know that she had her walking clothes on. She she didn't have, you know, what she wore to bed. She didn't have what she wore the night before, which would tie in with maybe he killed her during the night. She had her walking clothes on her sneakers her shorts you know she had her walking clothes on so another thing diane pointed out was that yes we're on a first name basis now diane and i <laughs> The expert, the strangulation expert, you know, he said that there's no way that a woman that's, you know, 100 pounds or less would fracture these bones during an incomplete hanging. So she said, I challenge you, jury, to go back to that. When you go back to the jury room, look for an article. Try to find one article where it says that you can, that these bones can be fractured during a manual strangulation. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting argument. So at the close of the evidence and the closing arguments, this is now in the hands of the jury. So the jury began deliberating at 4.15 and yeah, 4.15 Eastern time. And then around 6.15 Eastern time, a couple hours later. You see the light go on. They have a red light. They show the jury light. There's a light that's on. If you ever watch the verdict watch, there's a light. And if it's red, that means the jury is deliberating. If it's yellow, that means they have a question. If it's green, that means they have a verdict. So it went from red to yellow and it stayed there for a while. So as we all in the chat suspected, they had asked if they could go home. So we learned that the jury had indeed left for the day and the jury will resume deliberations today. Watch in the eye for a link to the verdict. It did occur while I was actually editing this video. So take a look at this video if you want to see how that trial actually turned out. Let's talk about the Nicholas Cruz case. More counselors. <laughs> this kid went through more counseling in his lifetime. Good gracious. Um, and they pretty much all kind of say the same thing. He was well behaved. You know, there was a psychiatrist. There was a counselor. She talked about, the psychiatrist talked about the medication that he was on. You know, the, the adjustments that they made to the medications. 
you know, I don't know how much more the jury wants to hear of this. I, I'm over it. You know, I get it. Okay. We get it. He was a troubled kid. They haven't even gotten to high school age yet. <laughs> no. Interesting, huh? So that will continue on again today. And these are not short witnesses. They, they are on there for a lengthy period of time. This is a huge snooze fest for the jury. I got to tell you, huge. It, it certainly is for me. I always come in with too much water. Oh, I gotta start doing better with that. Okay. I thought the garbage men already came. Now I'm hearing them again. Oh dear. Oh dear. What could the matter be? Oh dear. I'm putting in the middle of these flowers this iridescent uh, watercolor just give it a little sparkle yeah cuz it's pretty it's pretty I don't know what's going on here with this flower over here we gotta fix it we gotta fix it man I don't know if there's any fix in this flower. I was wondering if maybe I should give acrylic paints a try. I don't know. I'm enjoying the watercolor. I think I'm going to stick with the watercolor because uh, just because I don't want to spend any more money. <laughs> I did get my GoPro the other day. I'm still learning how to use that. That's pretty. <sighs> this is very, um, like I said, an iridescent. It just kind of gives it a little sparkle. And I actually have this taped down to the desk because when you do the background that I did, I did it wet on wet. So the paper curls and when it, I wanted to flatten it out so I could put the flowers on it. Let's do some smaller flowers. So it is Friday. Tonight I will be on Mickey Sunshine Creates live uh, for our diamond painting event, The Great Escape. Uh, we will have... Teague's creation will be on. I can't find the brush I want. I found it. No. That's not it. Huh. I'm looking for... That's crazy. Where's my brush? Oh, <laughs> it's over here. I was using it last night. Okay, that's not it. This is it. It's called a cat's tongue <laughs> brush. Yeah, so I wanted to use this. Let me spray this down a little bit more. The humidity is so high that it just dries up this paint. So what happened this day in history? Let's talk about 1920. This day in history, August 26th. The 19th Amendment is ratified.
and adopted. And this gives women the right to vote. So before 1920, we were not allowed to vote. Can you imagine? Now, boy, do we have a vote. We can make our needs known, can't we? Just ask us about abortion. We'll tell you what we really want. Get all those men out of Congress, out of, uh, you know, the local politics, and let the women decide what's important. Yes. I know. Stop it, Rebecca. The only caveat to this 19th Amendment was it still did not allow black women to vote, just white women. How messed up is that? Like, it's so interesting looking at it retrospectively, but at the time, they didn't see a problem with it. So it wasn't for several decades later until that the black women got to right, the right to vote as well. Yeah. So tonight, we will be on Mickey Sunshine Creates channel. That will be at 7.30 Eastern Time. Six thirty Central. I'm just finishing up the painting here. It's kind of a short show today. Yep. Not a lot to talk about, you know, seeing that there were closing arguments in the one case. I will tell you, though, at one point during Diane Menashe's closing argument, you know, when she's talking about Emily's suicide and her, um, the defendant's son's suicide, he was he was in tears. He was in tears. And this is not the first time I've seen him show emotion during uh, this trial. You know, most defendants are very stoic. This guy, he kind of, he, he you can kind of get where he's, he does have some facial expressions that kind of let you know what he's thinking, um, which is unusual <laughs> to see that. But yeah. Okay. I think I want to add more to this. Um, but I don't want to do it on camera because, you know, I don't want to have you guys just sitting there watching me paint. <laughs> Although, I don't know, maybe you think it's fascinating. I, I will take a picture of this so you can see as far as I got, but I'm loving the background. Um, just the fact that it's not on just white paper and that it's got some color to it. I did kind of the landscape background where you have the sky and the grass and some water, but it's really not designed for that purpose. It's just, it was just, I wanted it to be colorful to, you know, make the, the flowers kind of pop. So that is the show for today, guys. Don't forget to join me and Mickey tonight at 630 Central, 730 Eastern. And the other thing is, don't forget to watch The Leftovers this weekend. Watch how the GoPro works out. Watch what I film. Watch what I buy. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. See you later.